In this video, we'll be looking at food chains and food webs. As an introduction, there's a video here for you to watch that was taken at Kruger National Park in South Africa, and it involves water buffalo, lions, and an alligator. The second video is on classifying organisms. It's really an introduction to terms such as producers, consumers, carnivores, etc. So we'll start with looking at some definitions. So organisms have different roles in ecosystems. So the first one we'll talk about, really, really important, producers. So organisms that make their own food using the energy of sunlight. So these are plants. Now plants undergo photosynthesis. They can grow by taking in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, taking in water, sunlight, and then they turn that into oxygen and sugar which is food. So this can be consumed by other organisms. So plants, really important, the start of food webs and food chains, they produce food. There's quite a few videos here for you to watch on different plants and vegetation. And then we get down to consumers. Now consumers, obtain their food by consuming other creatures. So if the consumer, sorry, if they consume a producer, they are known as a primary consumer. So think in terms of school, we have primary school, secondary school, and then universities, tertiary. So if they consume a producer, they are a primary consumer, which is also known as a herbivore. So think herb, like a plant, herbivore, plant eaters. So here is a lovely picture of a dugong eating seagrass. It is a herbivore. So if an organism consumes herbivores, they are a secondary consumer or a carnivore. So kookaburras are carnivores. So if they consume herbivores, they are a secondary consumer, which is known as a carnivore. If they consume carnivores, um, they are a tertiary consumer. So this is a tiger. So these are considered the top sort of predators in food webs, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, some species eat both producers and consumers, and they are called omnivores. So we are omnivorous. Our digestive system tells us that we are omnivorous. We have both pointy and sharp teeth for cutting and big teeth for grinding, and how long our food stays in our digestive system all relates to being an omnivore. So you've got animals like, there's plenty of other animals that are omnivores, such as this bear here. So some creatures eat dead producers or consumers. So they eat dead matter and they're called detritivores because technically what they're eating, we, we term, we, the term we give it is detritus. Now these are really important for ecosystems. So detritivores are decomposers. And these are things such as bacteria and fungi. So they break down dead organic materials. So they have a really important role in ecosystems. They absorb the nutrients from dead organisms or waste materials and they return it to the soil and they return it to the ecosystem. So it's really important that we have decomposers, otherwise we would have dead matter laying around everywhere. Now, Nutrients and chemicals and things, they don't just get created out of nothing and they don't turn into nothing. They don't get destroyed. They get recycled. So decomposers play this really important role in ecosystems whereby they recycle nutrients back into the ecosystem. So plants, even though when I said they photosynthesize and they need carbon dioxide from the air and water, they also need some nutrients from the soil to be healthy. So having that matter recycled, really, really important. So there's a few videos here that you can watch. Um, there's this one on decomposers and I have another one down here on food chains. Now, when we talk about food chains, this is our way of showing relationships between organisms, particularly feeding relationships. So it's all about who eats what. So food chains are very, very simply done. They involve arrows. The arrows are really important. They point towards the organism doing the consuming because what the arrow shows is the flow of energy. So when we use those broad terms before, it goes producer, 
they are then consumed, so their energy goes on to the first order consumer or the primary consumer, then you've got the secondary consumer um, and the third order or the tertiary consumer. So primary, secondary, tertiary. So you'll be looking at here producers of plants, primary consumer will be a herbivore, and then you'll get into carnivores and omnivores as you go up the food chain. Now, food webs are more complex than a food chain. So they show a lot more of the feeding relationships in a particular location. So it will be made up of a lot of different food chains. So a food web shows the feeding relationship of all organisms in a particular location. So a food web is many food chains intertwined. So there's a good interactive here that you can go on to and have a look at food webs and another video here. As I said before, the arrows in a food web and food chains are really important because they show the flow of energy. So this is a food web. So you can see there's a lot more relationships than just a food chain going across the page. Now, when we draw a food web, it still does have an order to it. So even though they can look quite messy because there's organisms all over the place, we try and have them organized in terms of the producer will be down the bottom and then we will work our way up to primary consumer, secondary, tertiary. So there is some sort of order as you look up the page. So you've got your producers and then it works its way up. Remember the arrows show the flow of energy. So you have some grass here, it is consumed. The energy goes to the grasshopper. The grasshopper is consumed by the frill neck lizard. The frilled neck lizards consumed by both dingoes and kookaburras. So you can see more than just a simple food chain, which might go grass, grasshopper, lizard, kookaburra, because this one here is also consumed by another organism. All right. So you can see here in this food web, the top consumer is the dingo because it consumes a lot of different organisms. We have a ocean food web here where you've got phytoplankton, so little, little organisms, little plants, krill, really little animals. These are eaten by humpback whales, emperor penguins. So same sort of idea though, you've got your producer, then your primary consumer, secondary, tertiary. And again, really important in a food where we can see lots of different feeding relationships. So the energy goes from the phytoplankton to the krill, to the squid, and then the squid will go to the fur seal and the orca. And the thing to consider in food, um, food webs as well is you can't have more consumers at the top than below. So you usually have what would be what would look like a pyramid. So you would have a lot more phytoplankton than krill, a lot more krill than these organisms, and a lot more of these organisms than your top ones. Because you need you need that balance. If you have a lot more fur seals at the top consuming all of these things, it, it's not sustainable because these organisms would all be getting eaten a lot faster. So we need that balance. So here's another food web here, where we have, this one actually is starting with your decomposed items. So your organisms that will get recycled into the ecosystem. Um, and then again, that flow of energy through, right up to your top level consumers. Uh, there's a good video here on dead stuff. There's one on Antarctica. And then there's a couple of activities for you to do here. So fill in the table using the food web below. So identify the producer, then the primary or first order consumer, secondary, tertiary. So to start with, primary would be the grass. Sorry, the producer. Producer would be the grass. Primary consumers would be the field mouse and the grasshopper. A tertiary, um, a secondary consumer would be the snake and a tertiary consumer would be the wedge-tail eagle. So you can write your own responses into the box there. I have another video here on rewilding. It's really interesting. As we talked about when we learnt about ecosystems, ecosystems like balance. So if we actually leave them alone, they will recover quite well. Remembering human impact does play a big role in the destruction of ecosystems. 
ecosystems can recover if they find ballots. There's also been um, examples where, for example, in America, they reintroduced wolves. So they, they increased the population of wolves, released them back into the wild. And what they actually found is that kept some larger animals that were eating a lot of the grasses under control. So it actually made a big difference in ecosystems. So it's a really cool video for you to watch. And there's another one here on these moths and orchids. Also, there's quite a few questions for you to do. So understanding food chains and food webs, it's really useful to do a lot of practice with them. So there's uh, quite a few questions and some activities down the bottom here. So if I keep going, there's some worksheets. So this one will take you a little bit while to, a little bit of time to get through. So let's have, I just saw this good food web again. So again, remember food webs, they try and have an order. So down the bottom here, we have our producers, then our primary consumers, secondary and tertiary. And you can see there's lots of different food chains um, that make up this food web. So it's showing all those relationships in the flow of energy.